Go in, we will get it yes, separated. Sir. That part you do quietly. Two people on either side. I told you blade comes, knife comes, cuts from left to right, and scissors is the opposite, right to left. Sit down, settle down somewhere. You can come here. Yeah. Now, the scissors are again, normally when you read, you read about meds and bomb, and also steelies, these names are not important. Even in your exam, please keep quiet. No, you just let them listen to what we are doing. Blade would be provided. If you have to provide something, quietly go and get it done without making any noise. And faculty at the back, please, Abhishek, Rishi, please make sure that they are quiet and they sit down. These people, the three, four of them, without work they will keep creating that noise, it's the point. Either do something or just sit down. The straight scissors and the curved. Now we have to keep to time also, otherwise you will miss out on many exercises. So therefore just stay focused. Remember, scissors cuts from a point to your right to a point to your left. And that I will explain already or from a point close to you to a point away from you. Am I right? Yes. Clear? Yes. Good. Now there is curvature and there is a straight scissors. Why have two types? That's the question. Especially in your final you asked. Look, scissors would be used mostly for cutting but also for dissection. At the same time, you want to use it in a straight line. If I use a curved scissors, it allows me a look at the tip all the time. Either the tip is up or tip is towards me. So what is the right way to hold a scissors? Tip looking at me or tip looking at the sky. Because you must, now no doubt, must see what you cut and you must cut what you see. It's a principle of surgery. Second one is, you must tie what you see and you must see what you tie. Most disasters happen when this rule is not followed. Why? Because you will cut something which you should not cut, or you will tie something which you should not tie, and there is a disaster. Cut what you see, and see what you cut. Tie what you see and see what you tie. It can only be possible if the instrument is curved. Now what is the difference between the scissors of a surgeon and that of a tailor? The student in red turban. Please tell him the question. Please tell him the question. Taylor is curved at the tip. Taylor No, if you don't know, say you don't know. If you don't know, say you don't know. No, oh, that's better. Sit down. Now, the difference is the fulcrum. The fulcrum is in the center in a tailored scissor and a surgical scissors it goes towards the tip. Surgical scissors can be straight as well as curved. And please pay attention. That's why I'm asking that's why I asked you to stand. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to what is happening. The curved scissors and straight scissors both exist in surgical armament today. But the difference between a scissors of a tailor and that of a surgeon is very clear. It's the fulcrum. Because you need, you cut crudely as a tailor, but as a surgeon, you cut it precisely. If you, I want to make the scissors more precise, I'll take the tip further up. Further, further up. That's physics of cutting. If it is, the fulcrum is close to the tip, your cutting would be very, very precise. There is a scissors here, which you can see. It has got a very long shaft and a very short blade. Actually ridiculously long, 
handled. You can say that a lot of steel has been wasted. Is it visible to all of you? Yes, Last row? Yes, Loudly? Yes, sir. So, thank you. Now, the advantage we have is the handle is long. And can you zoom here, please? The bottom is straight, the upper end is curved. It's used in vascular surgery. Because it can hook and cut. So it will not take the posterior wall. Now it's all right. I can see. Everybody can see. Pots. P-O-T-T. Positive face. You understand the... Um, do you understand now the surgical scissors? What's your name? Just breathe. Just breathe. The advantage of fulcrum being towards the tip is it will be very, very precise. And that's what we are looking at. Okay? The straight and curved scissors are for a different purpose. Curved scissors is because you want to see what you cut. You want to cut what you see. Therefore, the curvature should be, the tip should be looking at you or up. If somebody is asking you, how would you hold the scissors? You'll hold it with the tip towards you or tip up. That's the key. Clear? Now, another reason why the tip should be towards you is, can you zoom out please? If I'm making a shadow cut from right to left, you can watch me as I'm cutting. Rather than looking at the screen, you can watch me directly. I'm making a cut from right to left. I can go straight on looking at the tip. If the tip is away from me, I'll have to adjust my arm all the time. So I'll be all over the place. So it's convenient to have the tip looking at me. And we can simply take it straight. Clear? Yes, sir. So that's about the scissors. Meanwhile, they, I'm sure they've got the blade sorted. Uh, Manish, you can call the ethical person. The third instrument, we'll finish with the instrument, then we'll get to doing it. Don't worry. Forceps. They are arranging bowel for you. Vinay? Blade to chain is up to They are also put this Now, these are the two forceps you can see. Can you see them? I want to hear yes or no. You better be alive and awake and kicking. Speak loudly. So that I know. I, I'm looking here so I don't know who has not heard it. Then you'll get up to ask me a question. There is a tooth here. There is no tooth here. It's a plain forcep. This is tooth forcep. There are only two types of forceps. Don't get into their names. Plain forceps and tooth forceps. Now forceps classically is a spring loaded instrument. There is a spring here. There are fenestrations here. What would the fenestrations mean? <laughs> the grip. Excellent. And you have, what is the purpose of this spring? It has a memory. What is the purpose of the memory? You close it, it goes back to its position. You close it, it goes back to its position. That's what you use the forceps for. And where, where do I, what is the advantage of a tooth? It can hold well and it can hold tough structures better. If I hold it with a plain forceps, I'll have to apply a lot of force. But if I have too many teeth, I'll traumatize it. So you must know that vital structures are not handled by tooth forceps and tough structures are not handled by plain forceps. There was a study conducted, please focus, concentrate here, they will put what they have to put. The, they observed the holding of skin with the tooth forceps and plain forceps and they found that the amount of force you have to apply to hold the skin with the plain forceps is bad enough to produce skin necrosis. So it can be more traumatic than what you see. So it is traumatic if you actually don't uh, hold it with the plain forceps. The tooth forceps is less traumatic. So don't think tooth forceps is traumatic all the time. It's very used work. Clear? Yes. So this is the 
instrument and I'll show you how do I use scissors for the purpose. Now I'm putting it against the light so that you can see the light is here so what do I do? Light has to come from there. Only. Now can you see or you can't? If you can't you must tell me that you can't so that I can adjust. Please can make light you saw. Ah that's better. Now with the tip up I make a cut and with the tip down I spread it. Right? So it is a dissecting scissors. That's why the curved scissors is also called as dissecting scissors. I'll show you at the other end, which is with one end has been raised by scissors, a blade, and this this end you will see will be raised by scissors. Now I can I think you can see better. Look, this is a this is not yet been raised. Keep looking at the screen, please. I'll make a cut. I've made it. You can see the cut here. And I'll take the yes, thank you the convex part up and I can spread it that creates a space and I'll again find some space to work on I'll make a cut and spread it I'll make a cut and then spread it now for postgraduates I always ask them now I'm showing you the flap here can you see this please yes. say yes yes sir now the other side was blade can you see this please? Yes, sir. Which one is better? Good. So I just want to simply tell you what is obvious. Blade is better than scissors when it comes to cutting. Because any instrument which has got two blades will first crush and then cut. And crushing would lead to death of a tissue which is a very important cause of post-operative wound infection. So any instrument that has got two blades will first crush and then cut. And therefore, blade is superior to scissors when it comes to cutting and raising a flap. But scissors is useful in the depth and along the cavity because of the curvature. Is, is this clear? Yes, sir. The only clear to 10 people. Others? Yes, sir. Thank you. Then why have straight scissors? These the straight scissors are used if the space between the two ends of the thread is very narrow and we can't afford to have a curved cut. So then we use a straight scissors and it is also used for cutting sutures and whenever you are using scissors remember to use your fingers to support it so that it is steady. We don't use it like this. Anybody cutting like this is actually a badly trained surgeon, a badly trained doctor should always support your scissors and then cut. What is the right height of the operating table? Anybody would raise his hand and answer? Yes? We have the waist of the surgeon. Waist of the surgeon. Which means it will vary. And in the gynecology you are taught the umbilicus of the surgeon. Which varies even more. The umbilicus goes places. Remember, whenever you are asked a question, give a reference point which is fixed. So both are wrong answers. The correct answer is, arms by the side of the surgeon and at the level of the elbow. That should be the incision. So the table would be a little lower because there is patient also. The reason is, most of the surgery is done at the elbow and the wrist. It is not done at the shoulders, except when you are doing orthopedic pulling of the bones or some gynecological delivery, I mean the obstetrics, you are delivering the baby. Otherwise, elbow and wrist. Therefore, the table has to be at that level so that you can use, you can maneuver your wrist accordingly. And remember, I teach my students to do pronation and supination when they are doing nothing else. And therefore, tennis is a popular game among surgeons. Reason? Most of the surgery is done with pronation and supination. Everything is pronation and supination. For that, elbows need to be flexed. Therefore, the right height is the height where the elbows are. So you are taking care of knife, scissors.
I've shown you the straight scissors, cut scissors, pot scissors, that is bonus. We have taken care of forceps. And now we move on to the next instrument, which is the workhorse of surgery. You will use it today. And that is, we've been given many names, hemostat or an artery forceps or a clip, depending upon where you live. It's a clip in US, hemostat in the UK, and artery forceps in Asia. They all mean the same. Look at the instrument at the screen. There are ratchets at the back. There are about three of them. And you can see them very clearly. There are two rings, ratchet at the back. There is a shaft. And then you can open up and see there are serrations. Zoom here, please. Zoom here. Up to there. And the serrations are transverse. Can you see that? So let's start with one thing at a time, you stay, I'm, I'm adjusting. The rings at the back don't enter completely because you'll be stuck with the instrument. Just about distal to the terminal interphalangeal joint of the thumb and the ring finger. Supported on the middle finger and you'll be guided by the index. The serrations that are transverse are very good for grip, but they are traumatic. You can't have both. No grip, no trauma. Grip, trauma. So you'll always have to weigh the pros and cons. Now, the transfer serrations make it a traumatic instrument, but the grip is solid. Clear? Why are there more than one ratchet? We'll discuss soon. Why not one? We'll discuss it. Now, this is straight artery forceps and this is a curved one. Same. The purpose is the same like I told you. I must see what I tie. And I must tie what I see. Same principle. You can watch it as I show it on the incision, I am holding on to the incision and if I have to tie, I should keep the tip in vision. If I do it like this, I will not be able to tie properly because I can't see what I am tying. That is why the curvature. With straight artery forceps, you have the adv advantage on the surface. But in this depth, you certainly cannot see the, the tip. You will be tying what you do not see. You are doing hysterectomy and you tie the ureter. You are doing some other surgery, you tie something white. So this becomes a problem. Therefore, see what you tie and tie what you see. Clear? Yes, sir. Now, depending upon the size, they are called medium, large, and mosquito forceps. This is a mosquito. We have friends from Bangladesh here. I did a Dhaka course four years ago and then also on the way back at Calcutta and then Lucknow. And there was a question I asked everybody, why is it called a mosquito? I keep repeating it to all my, my registrars who remember this all the time I say it. Now, this is actually a loaded mosquito, so you can see that it's the same thing, but it's very small. So I asked them, why is it called a mosquito? It is holding onto the tissue, like this. And the answers given were very interesting, so I'll share with you. One was that it can hold the moustache of a mosquito. It's as precise as that. The next question, obviously, I'm, I always ask the question. That's the way I teach. Then how about a she mosquito? <laughs> the second answer was, after it has held the tissue, it looks like a mosquito sitting. And it does actually. Hats off to the guy. I said, I agree with you. I never thought that way. It 
does look like a mosquito trying to take the blood out of the body. And they sit in a perfect coordination. If you watch a mosquito do it, it's a perfect example of a blood sucker who sits in a pose where the front legs go down, the hind one goes up, and he creates a vertical chain so much so that he can take all of it like a capillary. But they both interact on I'm afraid. It's simply called mosquito because of the size. You could have called it a house fly also, but that looks a little weaky, so people don't like to call anything a house fly. Otherwise, they mean the same thing. Sometimes on the table, the, there are lots of instruments lying, and you're asking the nurse for a particular instrument. You say, there's no the next, then the next, then the next. That's what the names have been given. The smallest one is a mosquito forceps, and then there is a medium. Bunker. And the large one is called a Kelly. So Kelly forceps is a large, long forceps. We don't have it here, and don't worry about it. Kelly is the name of the surgeon. K E double L Y. E Y or Y doesn't matter. Now it is a traumatic instrument. I have already told you, but you can make it less traumatic by loading some latex on it. And this loading can be with a rubber pad or with a, you can cut a feeding tube and load it. If you are in the field and you have nothing else, you can use it for holding a vessel also. It will be less traumatic. There is nothing atraumatic in this world. Less traumatic. There it will be less traumatic. So it is used for holding sutures, usually monofilament sutures. Monofilament suture means single filament suture. They are very delicate and they fracture. The sutures fracture. Therefore it is used for it, for holding the suture. Then what is it called? Please note down. Rubber shot. So if you are in a setup where they ask you pass me the rubber shot, you shouldn't look like a stranger in there. It is to hold the monofilament suture. The close cousin of this instrument is, where I discussed the ratchets also, is a needle holder. That's going to be your life and death today. You'll be using it throughout. Remember, it also has rings at the back, ratchets here, a box joint, and look at the serrations. Can you zoom here, please? Thank you. Lovely, excellent. Now, this is what you see, and there is a groove which is for the needle to sit. Now watch the serrations, they are not transfers, they are crisscross. I will tell you a reason why. Look, why more than one ratchet here is what I will explain to you just now. The most common sound in the middle of a night by the residents. See, it sounds sweet. Want to hear it again? Once more. But it's terrible, which destroys the tissue. Just one ratchet at a time. Because if you crush the tissue, I've already told you, it will be a very important reason for tissue necrosis and infections. So use one ratchet. Therefore, there are many ratchets. Because you don't need more than 40 to bite and 60 to chew. And you have 32. Why 32? So that you can afford to drop one every 10 years and still have four at the end. Same applies here. If you use all three first day, the instrument would wear out. So the ratchets have been provided for the wear and tear of the instrument. 